Welcome back everyone. If you've watched this show before, and if not, why you haven't you? You've probably heard all about why I think China is the real enemy America needs to be wary of, not Russia. But is there an alternative to economic dependence on China? What about India? Joining me now from Singapore, the author of The Billionaire Raj, A Journey Through India's New Gilded Age, James Crabtree. I think we're going to say good morning to you, James. It's morning there, isn't it? Good morning, Steve. Yeah, it's about uh, 9.40 in the morning here in Singapore. Very good. So listen, um, you've, you've written all about India and how that country's changed so uh, remarkably in, in recent years. Um, I think that this argument about China often goes one way, which is, yeah, we'd like to kind of disentangle ourselves from China. It's not a great regime, et cetera, et cetera. But you're stuck because, we, we, you know, who else are you going to trade with? Who else are you going to invest with, et cetera? But India is a massive economic opportunity, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I mean, India is a huge and growing economy. It's the fastest growing economy in the world. Uh, you were just talking about Amazon and Walmart in your last segment. So Walmart just invested $16 billion to buy an Indian tech company. Amazon's investing $5 billion to try and become the largest e-commerce player in, in India. Uber as well is trying to, to win there. So you have a lot of American businesses looking to India as it starts to grow in the way that China used to. But it's a much bigger issue. Uh, China, as you have said on your show, is slipping backwards into a form of neo-Leninist or uh, India is the world's largest democracy. It's a broadly speaking market economy. It could be a great friend to America if America plays its cards right. So what do you describe in your book in terms of what's, what's happening with India's economic and development and in other ways? So India is growing very quickly. As I said, it's the world's largest, uh, world's fastest growing economy. India, although it actually has some of the same problems that you face in the United States. So it has a deep and vibrant tech center, sector. It has a lot of big companies, but it also has a growing problem with inequality. Um, there were only two uh -huh. billionaires in India in the mid-1990s. There's now something like 120. Uh, that's more than any country apart from China and America. So while India is growing and becoming more economically important and attracting more investment, it's it's also struggling with some of the same problems uh, of inequality that you have in the United States. And do you think that India, what's the attitude of India to um, uh, investment and economic partnership? Would they, would they welcome it with open arms or are they more kind of wary of, for example, the US getting involved with them economically? Well, I think this is the big opportunity that if you look at it, particularly from Silicon Valley, where, where you live and uh, where you was talking about what you've been talking about, um, China has a completely closed ecosystem for foreign investment. So if you look at the American tech giants, they're not even allowed to open there. Uh, India is Facebook's largest market by users, Google, Twitter. Uh, they don't make a lot of money there because the country is quite small. But in terms of the number of people they have using their platforms, it's big. And so while China has a big head start, both in terms in terms of the size of its economy and the vibrancy of its tech sector, uh, India has a much more open system uh, and one that's much more uh, willing to engage with outsiders, particularly from the United States. Mm -hmm. And so in the, in the medium term, that should give India an advantage. James, brilliant. Um, I have to leave it there for now, but I really want to talk about this a lot more. I think it's crucial in terms of the sort of geopolitics in, in the rest of this century, frankly. Your book is fascinating. Congrats on that. I hope everyone goes and buys it. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Steve. Coming up, Lisa and Richard are back with final thoughts. Don't go away. So time for some wise words from our fantastic team here. Richard, over to you. Well, I actually think this India segment was interesting because I think if... Unlike of, the rest of the show. No, the whole <laughs> show was interesting, but the India segment was interesting, particularly, particularly because... Yeah, I got it. Instead of, I think, a senseless trade war against China, I think we're better off yeah. using our, 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 in, our, in, our money uh, investing in India as a way to counterbalance China because of the amount of foreign direct investment they have in emerging markets all across the world. That's a great point. They're huge on that. Please. I thought the immigration segment was very interesting, among the other ones as well. <laughs> so, but, uh, just looking at the 180 that Democrats have done on the issue, and also one thing that never gets talked about is if you actually look at polling, the majority of Americans side with President Trump on a lot of these issues, whether it's sanctuary cities, whether it's border security, yeah. um, and even on the wall. So something that doesn't get talked about. It's true. You, I will show you the polling, Richard. We can talk right. about well, it. We're going to keep, keep talking about it. That is all we have time for tonight. You can learn more about the next revolution by following us at Next Rev FNC. Mark Levin is up next. I'm Steve Hilton. See you next Sunday when the next revolution will be televised.